The first thing we usually do in an energy audit after we've met the customer is we take a walk around the outside of the house for several reasons. We have to measure the outside of the house because we need to know the volume of the house and the square footage and all that to calculate various things. And we're also looking for problems with water, uh, water drainage problems, uh, things like that. Whatever we can find, clues on the outside of the house as to why a house might be using more energy than it should. Here we have a bay window sticking out, so this could be some potential problems uh, with heat loss or air leakage through the bottom of this bay window. Another thing that we do in the walk around is we try to find all of the vents in the house from your exhaust fan in your bathroom, your exhaust fan in your kitchen, because anytime there's an exhaust fan that dumps into the attic or dumps into the wall or something like that, you're going to cause problems with moisture in your house. Possibly, if it's an extreme case, you could get mold buildup. One of the most important things in an energy audit is looking for this leaks that happen between the top of the house and the attic, because that's where enormous amounts of heat can escape from the house. It's like a chimney. Heat can go up the chimney and get pulled in at the bottom. So we're going to go up in the attic now. This is a very typical attic. We've got, this is a blown fiberglass insulation. Uh, and then we have fiberglass bats on top of it. So what we're looking for is places where air can leak from down below up into it. And one of the most common places is the tops of all the walls. Every wall downstairs has a thing called a top plate here. Every place where you see, this is the main duct, and you have this flexible duct going off. Every place where there's a joint between the main duct and the flexible duct is very likely a source of air leakage. And that's important because every time you turn on your heating system, large amounts of air are probably leaking out of here and going into the attic and doing you no good at all. One of the most important uh, tools of, uh, of our profession as uh, energy auditors is the blower door, which everyone's heard of, but maybe not many people have seen. It's basically a big, powerful fan that we use to depressurize the house. The most important part of the blower door we call the manometer. This is a, an instrument that measures very small changes in air pressure. This number is, I think, about 40% higher than it could be optimally. So this shows that we do have some sources of air leakage in the house. But now the fun part begins. We can actually walk around the house and find the places where the air is leaking in. Because there's such a difference between the inside and the outside, we can actually feel the air. This is a case where you don't need any expensive equipment to detect the air leaks. You can just use your hand. Hatches to the attic are one of the greatest sources of air leakage. You know, they may look like they're sealing, but there's a lot of leakage around the outside, and I can feel it with my hand. There's a lot of things that can be done to a, a hatch like this, various kinds of weather stripping. There are even kits now available, even at common uh, home improvement stores, that you can build a little tent over your attic door to help both insulate it and to seal the air leaks that are happening. Most people really think, when they, when they think of an energy audit, they think we're going to find something wrong with their windows. Because uh, I guess the energy audits back in the 80s and the 90s, people would always get those audits and the people would say, yeah, you need to replace your windows in order to save energy. Today we really have come to the conclusion that windows are not all that important. Uh, of course, if your window is broken, and then this is an example of a window that has some kind of a problem, because I can feel the air leaking from under the window. But this is a case where some kind of seal has broken down under the window and we simply have to weather strip the bottom of that. There's no need to replace this window. And you can see that air is blowing out of that duct register. Well, you think, what's wrong with that? Air is supposed to blow out of duct registers. But in this case, the heating system is not running right now and the air conditioning. So the air that's coming out of it, and I can feel it, the air that's coming out of this duct is an indication of what we saw when we were in the attic of an air leak 
in the duct system. Because what's happening is air is being pulled through the blower door and air is being pulled through uh, the leaks in the duct in the attic and coming here. Same way I did the duct, I can put this pan over it. Now look at that. What are we, number we have here? 46. What that means is, this is basically just a hole in the ceiling. Air is just being pulled right through this as if it were just a big hole in the ceiling. Because this one is a non-airtight, non-insulation contact recessed light. Down in the basement of the house, we typically have air being pulled in in the basement area. One area that air can leak in commonly is called the, uh, call it the rim joist. It's basically, this house has a you know, concrete foundation and uh, the walls are sitting on top of that. That junction between the two, often there's insulation. This is a piece of fiberglass insulation that's set here. But it's not, it's not sealed and uh, you can see this blackness on the, on the insulation. I mean, the insulation should be all yellow like this. But you can see on the edges, there's all this darkness. This is to an indication that air is leaking through the cracks here. And uh, I can feel it. It's, this is not very strong, but there's a lot of length around the basement. Any kind of piece of equi combustion equipment like this, because it's a burning flame, uh, everyone's heard of carbon monoxide coming out of cars. But furnaces and water heaters also generate carbon monoxide. If they're burning really well and the equipment is new and working really well, the amount of carbon monoxide is very small, maybe even zero. But you can't tell just from looking at the equipment whether it's doing that. So we do a lot of tests to make sure that the equipment is not producing any carbon monoxide or any other kind of exhaust gases that might be causing health problems for the occupants of the home. Tacoma Park resident Matthew Graham understands the benefits of the energy audit and can't wait to make the improvements to his home.